Yeah, hi. So this talk is about rethinking errors in Go. So I assume you're all familiar with this uh, idiomatic pattern of handling errors in Go. So when I say rethinking errors, I'm not trying to make this less verbose by introducing new syntax, maybe later, but I want to focus on semantics. So why? Because in practice, as it turns out, it's a little bit more tricky than, you might see, than it might seem. So let's consider this example. So we're copying here the contents of a reader to um, a Google Cloud Storage file, uh, and we do this atomically. So we take the error returned by copy and pass it to a deferred uh, call of close with error. And um, if the error is nil, it's written atomically, and otherwise the write is aborted. So it seems like a pretty common, straightforward application of this pattern we saw earlier, uh, except that it's not. So our first uh, failure is uh, that we should handle a panic. So what if you don't? So if there is a panic in copy, the error will say null, it will be passed to close with error, and you have a partially written or corrupted file possibly being committed. So we don't want that. So the solution is simple. It's shown here in yellow. So we basically set it to some arbitrary value and then make sure that um, you know, like the nils is only passed if there's actually success. So the second problem is that we're not returning the error from close. So in generally, this is OK. Very often, you don't need to. But in this case, we want the caller to be able to retry if there is an error. So if you put it all together, it looks like this. So you don't really have to look at a code. That's not important. Um, what, is this, what I'm trying to show here is that it's a, we're getting quite far away from the original six lines to make this code correct. And it's sort of far away from the original idiomatic pattern. So how do we simplify this? So instead of looking at syntax, I really want to understand uh, what is the problem with errors? Is there maybe something about errors uh, that make them harder than they need to be? So a first obvious target um, is close. So if you think about it, close can mean clean up. It can mean hang up, disconnect. It can mean um, commit, as we saw earlier. And very often, if it, with these different meanings, you require slightly different error handling. So, but then what do you do? Do you going to split up all these different methods and give them different names? We have a lot of Go code. It's going to be a little bit messy. And also, the lines are kind of blurry. So this doesn't seem like a good solution. So let's look at error. So I really like Go error, so I really don't see why I want to change that. So I am not. But what about the relation between error and panic? So let's look at the differences between them. So an error is recoverable. A panic is not. Or is it? So oftentimes, you can have a panic, and you would still want to continue, like a little bit like the HTTP package does. And sometimes we get an error, and you want to terminate the application. So the line between the two is actually somewhat blurry, yet Go doesn't, uh, treats them as completely separate. They're separate concepts. So can we benefit from a model where we, where we try to unify the two, these two things? So in order to test that, I implemented this burner package. Uh, called uh, RC, and there's also an RD. And it's an alternative model for this. So it basically unifies the semantics of error, panic, and defer. Uh, you can just use it in Go to test the semantics. So the idea is to have a single error variable uh, where, where all, within a function where all the errors are tracked, including panics. Other than that, everything stays the same. A panic is still a panic, and an error is still a value, as we're used to. Um, but you, but you have a unified way of tracking errors. So to use the package, if you, um, if you use the package and apply it to the original example, you get something that looks like this. So the first two lines are mandatory uh, boilerplate. Um, the rest pretty much looks, if you look at it closely, it pretty much looks like the original example. And um, it, basically what it does is it gets error handling out of the way. And it really allows you to apply the original, you know, the idiomatic approach of check and defer um, mindlessly. So the, the takeaway here is if you're designing a new language feature, it really pays off to look at semantics first. Um, references to the GitHub package are here, and feedback is welcome. Thank you.